Attack on Titan, 10 characters whose popularity declined by the end of the series. Some Attack on Titan characters started out as heroes but changed over time, while others seemed to be forgotten in the story's final arcs. The Attack on Titan universe began with a plethora of likable characters to choose from and identify with. However, as the world began to change rapidly around them, they were forced to make critical decisions. Many of which cast them in an unfavorable light with audiences. Whether due to atrocious choices or simply being forgotten by the narrative, many characters have become less popular with fans by the end of the 139 chapter series. Bear in mind that this article will contain manga spoilers. 10. Emer betrayed her values, surrendered her life to the warriors. In the beginning, Emer defined herself as a rugged and egotistical survivor who would do anything to keep Historia safe. By the end of the second season, she betrayed virtually everything she stood for through her decision to accompany the warriors back to Marley. Despite admitting that parody stood a decent chance against the rest of the world. She gave up for Historia's sake. While her absence allowed her paramour to flourish as the new leader of Eldia, it also equipped the nation's enemies with a deadly titan shifter. 9. Pixis was constantly outmaneuvered before his unceremonious death. At first, Pixis was presented as a hardened, intelligent, and patient military general. After arranging a clever test, he cunningly determined the current monarchy of parody to be unfit for its people. However, he lost much of his wits after the insurrection actually succeeded. Pixis was completely unprepared to deal with the Yigurist threat and even suggested surrendering to them. In the end, he was unceremoniously put down by Armin after being transformed into a pure titan and turning against his former comrades. 8. Yelena lost credibility after Aaron's true intentions were revealed. At first, Yelena was portrayed as a polite, albeit conniving woman with unknown motives. However, much of her appeal waned after she explained her obsessive reverence of the Jaeger brothers and their dream for Eldian genocide. To make matters worse, her aspirations came crashing down when Aaron revealed his true intentions for the founding titan's power. By that point, her spirit was so broken that she didn't mind being captured by the Jaegerists or threatened with execution. The Marleyan volunteers had already scattered, and her cause was completely lost. 7. Historia became irrelevant after her pregnancy. As the last member of the royal family, it's understandable how Historia would feel obligated to produce as many successors as possible. However, from a narrative perspective, it was incredibly disappointing and anticlimactic. Not only would it entail that Historia's reign as queen is cut tragically short, it deprives her of an opportunity to live for herself as Emer had emphatically suggested and ultimately died for. In the end, it's difficult not to notice Historia's absence in parody most defining hours and her missed opportunity to play a role in them as a key figure. 6. There was ultimately little follow-up after Kiyomi's revelation. Kiyomi Ajimabito introduced herself as a relative of Mikasa and informed her of her Hizuru ancestors' rich history. This immediately provided a greater opportunity to explore Mikasa's character, one which was sorely needed when considering how much she had been defined by Eren so far. Sadly, the uprising of the Yigurists, the events of the rumbling, and the global political fallout which occurred afterward provided little opportunity for there to be any meaning or relevance behind Kiyomi's presence at all. 5. Zeke Yeager was outsmarted by Aaron unceremoniously slain by Levi. During the early acts of the story, Zeke was introduced as a credible villain. He slew humanity's second strongest soldier effortlessly and annihilated most of the scouts. However, his formidability would gradually collapse as the series progressed. In addition to being repeatedly and decisively defeated by Levi sometimes in a matter of seconds, he was also outsmarted by Aaron. 
In the end, Zeke's status as an antagonist was significantly overshadowed by his half-brother, making his death in the final act a forgettable footnote in a much larger battle. 4. Armin lost his complexity or the end of the series remained a pushover. When he was introduced, Armin was a sophisticated character who balanced doing what was right with what was necessary. He shot dead the MP who would have killed Jean and even told Bertholdt that Annie was being tortured in order to psychologically throw him off his game. However, Armin became a stand-in for the conventional moral option by the beginning of the Marleyan arc thereby reducing the dimensions of his character. Worse yet, he was dominated in every fight he actually engaged even after inheriting the colossal titan. 3. Lara Tiber didn't live up to the Warhammer's expectations. When the Warhammer titan was conceptually introduced, it was made out as a weapon to be feared. Its shifting ability was so powerful that the Tiber family refused to tell the Marleans who owned it since they didn't want to lose leverage. Despite how it was presented, Lara was defeated and devoured by Eren in their first fight. Worse yet, her strength would be turned against the heroes during the battle on the founding titan's back. Consequently, Lara was an overhyped character who spent her entire life as a servant to others. 2. Levi Ackerman was surprisingly irrelevant during the story's last fights. Levi proved his worth to the heroes on countless occasions, including his victories over Annie Leonhardt, Kenny Ackerman, and Zeke Yeager. However, after the latter detonated a thunder spear in his face, he was severely injured and depressingly irrelevant for the remainder of the story. While Levi would join the fight against Aaron's skeletal titan, his only real accomplishment was decapitating Zeke, a man who had already repented of his ways and actively tried to help him. Despite the great scenes Levi had throughout the series, he ended on a low note. 1. Aaron's motives were bizarrely inconsistent controversial. Although Aaron's intention to wipe out the world was consistent with his character, his methods of going about it were bizarre. For example, he stated that he didn't take away Armin's shifting ability to preserve his free will while simultaneously subjugating the titans of the past and turning innocent Eldians into monsters. He also loved Mikasa and wanted her to be happy while deliberately pushing her away and hoping that she'll never forget about the blight that he was on her life. Regardless of whether or not the rumbling was justified. Aaron's actions are so inconsistent that one could reasonably assume he went insane.